Many of you may know me for my single pour technique, but I didn't always start with a single pour. Today, I wanted to look back at the first brewing method I use and how I currently interpret it. This is my take on Tetsu's 4-6 method. If you guys are new here, my name is Vincent and I'm the head roaster for Tails Coffee. And if you love educational and experimental videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can get the latest updates on my newest techniques. Now, if you aren't familiar with this method, it is actually the 2016 World Brewers Cup Champion recipe designed by Tetsu Kasuya. And if you haven't watched his video already on the Hario page, we're gonna leave a link in the description below, and it, you can just watch how he brews it himself. But a quick overview of this technique is, it's pretty much a very simple technique where it divides the brew into five parts, five equal parts. Now the first two are to control the acidity and the sweetness, and the latter three are to control the strength of the coffee. Since in his original video, he did not actually go over how his technique actually works, I wanted to analyze how I interpret his thought process. Because sweetness and acidity are brewed within the first two pours of this method, we are looking to maximize the flavor extraction during this time, and for that, we should be using a higher water temperature and I suggest we use 97 to 98 degree water. And if you want to learn a little bit more about extraction and how it works, there will be a link in the des description below where I talk about how extraction and what flavors are being extracted at what times. After the acidity and the sweetness have been brewed, the last three parts are mainly focused on extracting the strength of the coffee. And for that, we simply need to cause motion in the coffee bed. It's kind of like dunking a tea bag repeatedly in a cup of water. When what happens, the darker flavors and the deeper flavors extract much quicker. However, after having two pours done, most of the coffees will have sank to the bottom of the dripper already. Another factor that actually causes strength is the amount of time the water is in contact with the coffee. And so for us to extract a lot more of the flavors, we're gonna to want to pour much slower, much closer to the coffee bed. And for that, I suggest we use the Hario Buono 700 milliliter kettle. That one with a longer spout and an elongated kind of stretched out shape, we can get really nice and close to the middle and actually bring out all the flavors properly. Now that we've discussed his original technique, Let's go over some of the factors that I would consider when executing the technique to improve your brewing experience. Now, in his original video with Hario, he doesn't actually talk about the pours or what he wishes to achieve with each of the pours. But for me, a key factor to brewing a good cup of coffee is to have even extraction. And for that, we need to have even grind sizes. And because we're looking to be brewing with multiple pours, we're looking to have a coarser grind size. And the larger the grinds, the more inconsistent the grind sizes. So for me, how I remove some of the finer ones is I actually don't tap my grinder because my, my grinder itself has a static catcher. And in the copper cup, it absorbs a lot of the static fines so I can actually wipe them away. I'm not sure how everybody um, can deal with themselves. Some people actually spray some of their beans with, uh, with water and it helps mitigate some of the fines. Or you can use kind of like a distribution tool. There are some rulers that have holes in them and you can actually tap out all the finer grinds. And so there are ways, if you can, try to remove some of the finer grinds to have a more even extraction. To have a better balance between sweetness and acidity, we're looking to pour a little bit slower in the first two original pours. And that's because if we were to pour a little bit faster, more of the acidity would come out and the balance might not be as great as you would like it to be. Since this first part is split into two, to prevent ourselves from over extracting, we're gonna be using a lower agitation. And for that, we'll be pouring nice and slow and steady and only down the middle. Since the last three parts are for strength, we're gonna be looking to use a higher agitation brewing technique. So we're gonna start in the middle and work our way to the edges. And in the first of the three pours, we're gonna do a flush to make sure all the grinds are pulled back in. And then for the next two pours, we're gonna be staying in the middle and working our way to the edge and back into the middle. And that's how we're gonna create a higher agitation with a slow pour that, that'll help us bring out all the strength 
that's necessary for this coffee. Now let me show you guys in a demo what I'm talking about. And for the demo, we'll be using 20 grams of a coarser grind bean, which is closer to more like a French press standard. And then we'll be using 300 grams of 98 degree water or just off of boiling. And so that turns into a one to 15 ratio, which is the wine he actually originally used in his video. So we've got our grind set up. I always like to have a little divot in the middle. We're gonna start with a nice and slow pour and we're only going to pour down the middle to create a stream. And we're gonna have it at 60 grams because it's five equal parts. To help everything kind of get extracted, we're gonna break it all up Make sure everything is completely moistened. And then we're gonna get into the second pour. We're only gonna pour down the middle and let all the water just flush up from the middle here. So we're gonna give that one more stir. Now you're looking at a pretty good looking bed right here. And so the next part is we're just gonna be pouring with more motion because this is where the strength of the body comes in, okay? So we're gonna be looking to move our way out to the edges. And then we'll be doing a flush. Flushing is when you pour down the sides. Notice how it's draining considerably slower now. See a little bit of the grinds peeking out. It's our cue to start our next pour. And as the crema has dispersed, we're gonna look to do our last pour and hit the 300 grams. If you want, you can do a quick stir, which I like to do. And that is our take on the 4-6 method. So now that we've finished our brew, if you wanna take a quick look, uh, the, the grinds are quite a bit chunkier than what we're normally used to. In the original video, he doesn't actually stir, but I still think stirring allows us to have a lot more of an even extraction. Um, I tried to do that by removing the grinds, or, like the finer grinds already, but the stirring really does help kind of finalize and agitate everything. Um, even when I used to serve the 4-6 method in my store, I always stirred at the, on the first pour and on the last pour. But because today we started using a little bit of a darker coffee, the second pour required a stir as well. So that is why we did a, a, a stir on the second pour. It is not entirely necessary, but we have more granular sizes here and it's still looking great. Ah, brings back good memories. Looking back at this, it's a great reminder of what I started with and where I really came from. This was definitely one of my favorite techniques and I even used it quite a bit for at least two years in my shop. It's actually kind of funny how this technique is almost the exact opposite of my single pour technique. It uses five different pours. It pours with a really high water temperature. It uses a very coarse grind, whereas I now currently use the single pour, which is one single pour. It uses fine grinds. And yeah, it's like the exact opposite, but they both brew great cups of coffee. So in the comments below, let me know which one you like, have you tried the 4 sex method? What do you think about my interpretation of the method? Do you guys like it? Do you guys agree with it? And uh, if you do, hit me with a thumbs up and let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.